Hi, I'm Michael Neufeld, and I'm a, a curator at the Air and Space Museum, and I'm here today to talk to Jay Barbary, who is the author of Neil Armstrong, A Life in Flight, uh, a new biography of Neil Armstrong. Uh, I'm very familiar with Jay because he was a voice on the radio and a face on TV during my years as a space buff in the 1960s, so it's very nice to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. So how, why did you decide to write this book? Well, Neil and I talked about it for about 20 years because mm -hmm. uh, we were had been pretty close friends for half a century, and I did a book with um, Alan Shepard called Moonshot, which did rather well. It was mm -hmm. on the New York in New York Times bestseller list, and he did the introduction of that. So we had talked because he wanted he didn't want a biography. He wanted a story of his life of flight. He felt like that anything he did. Uh, any of the other astronauts could do, especially Jim Lovell or Gene Cernan or Tom Stafford, you know. So he, he wanted them to get equal credit. He was that type of guy. He never thought of himself, you know, as being anything special, mm -hmm. but he wanted the story of flight told and we were going to do it. And when he passed away, uh, we'd already worked one chapter out and I decided to go ahead because, uh, you know, and do the flight because people looked at me and, and so, suddenly they made sense. I looked around. Mike, and all the people from Apollo, practically all of them are gone. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that over half the people on the planet today weren't even here when he walked on mm -hmm. the moon. Anyone less than 45 years old because the 45th anniversary is coming up this next week. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they were saying to me, the other astronauts was, Jay, if you don't do it, who's going to do it? So we need Neil's story. And Jim Lovell calls it a great book and uh, adds to Neil's legacy. So we did our level best to try to get this done for the uh, history. Mm -hmm. We've had a heavy library sale, advanced sale, so that's great. So we were trying to get Neil's story mm -hmm. in the libraries for history, and hopefully we've taken a shot mm -hmm. at it, and hopefully mm -hmm. we've done a little good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there was one earlier biography, and that's James Hansen's First Man. Was that book well? That's, useful that's to you? the official. No, that that's his official biography. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he he signed to do that. And this is not a biography. It's a, a recreation, you know, mm -hmm. of his story on direct observation and, and, and research and all generally referred to as a reptage. So mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's yeah. not, it not, I hate biographies. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to do biographies. You, but you've yeah. already done two that are sort of quasi uh, Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Somewhere yeah. between biography and autobiography. The mm -hmm. other one, the Slayton, it was a Slayton and Shepard book, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah. Moonshot I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Neil introduced it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, how you started this book, was it because you had a friendship with Neil Armstrong going back a very long time? And, and when did you meet him? Well, I'm, I met him in 1962 when he came in with the Gemini 9, the mm -hmm. second group of astronauts. But there was a, a couple of personal things in 1964. He lost a young girl, mm -hmm. uh, Karen, mm -hmm. Anne, and she, had a, she died of a brain tumor at the age of two. And it, really, it was really difficult for Neil. And I lost a young son. Mm -hmm. And one morning, uh, he came into the Howard Johnson's on Cocoa Beach. And this was 1964, and I was in there talking with Wallace Shara. My wife was still in the hospital, and he looked at me and he says, uh, who shot your dog? Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, well, you know, I had a little tragedy and told him about it. And he and I got to talking about it, and uh, he didn't talk much. Most people didn't know that he even had a daughter, yet, let alone that he had lost her. Mm -hmm. And that was while he was flying X-15 out at, uh, you know, Edwards. Mm -hmm. which is now named after Neil Armstrong. It's the Neil, right. Ar Neil Armstrong right. Research Center. Yeah, just renamed. Yeah, and so anyway, um, we just got to a point that we were trusted friends, is what I'd like to say. Some people want to say, well, you were Neil's best friend. No, I wasn't Neil's best friend. I don't know who the heck Neil's best friend was. Mm -hmm. But we were friends, and we were trusted friends, and we worked together. Uh, mm -hmm. When the Challenger blew up, for example, he was called by Reagan to be the vice chairman to actually do the mm -hmm. investigation. And I broke it on the story two days later on the Tom Brokaw show. And the first person called me when I got off the air was Neil. And he mm -hmm. says, uh, what did you, what do you know that you didn't tell Brokaw? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I told Brokaw everything, you mm -hmm. know. But anyway, we worked together on that and all through and a couple of times we were gonna get started on this book and never did. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we did other stories together and there was a couple of other offers 
by publishers and which Neil thought about and turned down. So as I say, we talked about doing this off and on, but then as I said, it, mm -hmm. somebody had to do it and, and um, you know, I wanted to take a whack at it and so hopefully it turned out okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, tell me a little bit about the background for you meeting him because obviously you were a correspondent at the Cape, a reporter, you know, for, for NBC for a, a lot of years. So when did you start there? Well, well, when I met him, he was one of the uh, mm -hmm. Gemini Nine. Yeah, and right. I'll tell you, our, <laughs> you know, the press, our impression of Neil was he was sort of like a, let, a wet blanket. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, he stayed back there. He didn't say much. He was not outgoing. And so I just knew him, you mm -hmm. know, like I meet, uh, meet you and we talk and I know you. But yeah, uh, yeah. it was nothing special about it until that morning and... Uh, uh, in, in Howard Johnson's where we talked about losing two children. Right, right. And then it grew. Yeah, but I'm thinking, I, just, I would like to give the, the viewers just a little background. You started at the Cape when? Started reporting uh, I started, down there? I started for NBC News on July 21st, 1958. Mm -hmm. And I had been covering the launches then since April of 58. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I was a veteran when Alan Shepard flew on, right. fe on, yeah. May, on yeah. May 5th, 1961. I didn't set out to do it, but I wound up covering every flight by American astronauts. Mm -hmm. There's been 166 of them. And I was fortunate enough, if they look on the inside and cover of the book, you'll see a picture of me on the air when Neil made the step on the moon. And you can see mm -hmm. Neil across mission control up on the big television screen stepping off onto the surface of the moon. Well, by then I knew him pretty well and I knew some things and, mm -hmm. you know, he told me some things in confidence, Mike, that mm -hmm. are not in that book. Mm -hmm. Even though he's passed on, I will not break that confidence because we had a working agreement mm -hmm. that like being a reporter generally, if I say to you and you and I sit down and talk and, 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 and the discussion is not all off the record, then everything mm -hmm. is open. But with Neil, uh, you had that friendship there to protect, and we worked so many things together. So before I would use anything, I would say to Neil, hey, I want to use this and this, okay? And he'd say, oh yeah, go ahead. And we never mm -hmm. had a situation mm -hmm. where that didn't take place, and he fully trusted me. And he told me things that, uh, as I say, I can't talk even about today, but I was lucky that I got, uh, you know, I got a lot of uh, reports from Neil behind mm -hmm. the scenes, and when he was investigating uh, the Challenger accident as a vice chairman, he and I talked a couple of times a week and I mm -hmm. kept him up to date on what I had and all of that. Nobody knew that. And, uh, you know, we just, mm -hmm. we worked together. But he uh, came, for example, NBC decided to give me a dinner after being with them 50 years. And mm -hmm. they said, now you can't invite anybody because, you know, the wheels are coming down from NBC in New York to be here for the dinner. And then finally they call him and says, you can invite three astronauts. Mm -hmm. and I said, okay, so I invited Neil and I invited John Glenn. Mm -hmm. And John Glenn and Neil were, as in the book, pictures of them, they went through jungle training together and that's where their friendship started, even uh -huh. though they were from the same state. Mm -hmm. And so Alan Shepard was dead, so I couldn't invite Alan Shepard, so I invited Edgar Mitchell, who walked on the moon with Alan Shepard. Right. And all three mm -hmm. of them came, and mm -hmm. I was uh, very lucky because Neil didn't go anywhere, but he came down, But uh, and he and John had earlier that year asked me to come up to Cleveland and keynote the uh, what they call the 500 Club in space, their 50th, and they had all 19 astronauts from Ohio, and we did television, and. Mm -hmm. I did the keynote. We just had a great time. Mm -hmm. So they came down. We had a great time. And um, there's a picture in the beginning of the introduction of the book of my wife, Joe, and myself and Neil sitting at the table and we're laughing. Mm -hmm. Well, John Glenn was up doing stand up comedy yeah, <laughs> you right. know, at the time. The picture. Yeah. But the, anyway, uh, that was sort of, sort of the way things went. And, mm -hmm. and, but I never did anything on the air without saying, hey, Neil, I want to do this. And he mm -hmm. says, yeah, go. Mm -hmm. you know, so and that was the relationship you established early on, or at least after the 1964 encounter. Yes, that's right. correct. That's that, correct. That, that before that time, he just was one of the, he was the one nine, of the and he was kind of anonymous to most people. Because, yep. of course, he was terribly, uh, well, I shy, maybe too strong, but he was certainly very reserved and private. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was a very private person, and he would think everything out. If you ask mm -hmm. him a question... He would think it through before he would answer it to make mm -hmm. sure he didn't give you an answer that wasn't true that he'd have to change later. Mm -hmm. But 
He was called the quickest 